Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. Every day my employees get scam emails. I wanted to protect my business and clients, so I checked out CISA's Secure Our World. They've got four simple ways we can protect our businesses from online threats. Learn more at cisa.gov forward slash secure our world. The following production is part of the We Be Geeks podcast collective. From days long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The dream that came through a million years, that lived on through all the tears. It came here, the Fandom Nexus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to our host as he plugged in his microphone. I have a podcast! Here he is, your spider pan, Jeremy. Greetings one and all. I'm back. I'm flying solo this week, but I am back. I meant to have a show last week. I meant to actually have a show out earlier this week, but uh, you know what? I found out some trailers were coming this week, and I wanted to wait until I got these new trailers in here in case it's another couple weeks before I get another show out. I am finding with my work schedule and uh, my work-life balance is extremely uh, underbalanced. I don't know. It's kind of balanced the wrong direction, and I'm, I'm finding less and less time to actually record shows. I get home from work and I am tired. I don't want to work on the shows. I just want to play games, which I'm going to talk about here in just a bit. But yeah, I, I, I'm even not really watching a lot of television. I'm even I'm behind on The Mandalorian. I think now to, as of today, I'm three episodes behind on The Mandalorian. And I even discovered that I hadn't even watched the entire first season of The Bad Batch. So shows that I actually do want to watch, I am really behind on, and it's it gets overwhelming when you get like a season and a half behind now on one show. And it's been really annoying on social media if you get on there and there's already people spoiling stuff that what happens on Mandalorian or who popped up in it. and It gets frustrating, and so it ends up making it where I don't want to watch and I don't want to commit to it. I just Sometimes I just want that quick breath of air of uh, a short YouTube video to entertain me. So, so I'm really not getting everything rolling as I normally think I would. But we are back this week, and I do have a lot more audio to share from Planet Comic Con here in Kansas City. I'm going to share the audio from our second panel. Uh, eventually, I do want to edit the the audio from Jonathan Frakes and uh, uh, a lot of other people, uh, the William Shatner. Uh, but I, I need to like edit out some language and things like that, and then that audio will be ready to be shared with you. Uh, but as far as other audio, uh, it's it's ready, of course, to go because you know I kept it clean. But I don't know if I'm going to get to any of that today. I've got a, a kind of a jam-packed thing uh, show today. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to have to get right to it and ask with questions, what have you been watching? And I, I want to talk about that. I watched WrestleMania 39 over the weekend uh, with Lost Boy Philip and uh, some other friends of ours. Uh, enjoyed, I think, maybe night one, maybe just a little more than night two. Uh, night one, a, a, an incredible match between Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley. I mean, just brought the house down, these two women. Just tore the place up. It was a fantastic match. And it was, I can I dare say, even though I loved the, the story that's been going on for the main event. Now, any of you who are not following any sort of wrestling or whatever, you probably know what I'm talking about. But there's been a really great storyline going on that was part of the two-night two event of the main events. Uh, and a good story of friendship uh, going on uh, that was culminated in the main event of the Saturday night's WrestleMania. And so I enjoyed that story, and so I enjoyed the match for that story. But as far as just quality matches, the women, uh, that was the, the match right before the main event, the final event, but uh, it's, it was still kind of a main event status. You know, it was a women's championship match. Just tore the house down. Just fantastic match. And really, that's it was so good that... Uh, even Charlotte Ray, or Charlotte Ray, uh, no, I think that's Mrs. Garrett, isn't it? <laughs> but Charlotte Flair was sitting at the edge of the ring, and of course, she's supposed, you know, she's lost, so she should not seem 
happy, but she couldn't help smiling because she knew that they had just put on the match of their lives and the show of their lives and the, the way the audience reacted. So she couldn't help smiling. You could just see it that she was just, you know, she'd put her all into that. And it was such a great match that she just couldn't hide her true emotions. And even Rhea Ripley, even though she's supposed to be, you know, a heel and supposed to be this horribly mean person, could not help smiling backstage about how wonderful everything went and how great that match was. They knew they had done so well, and it was a great match. And, you know, possibly even more fun than uh, the main events on Sunday night. Which culminated, and this is where it got interesting. Uh, we had this huge build up, and we thought Cody Rhodes would be the one to finally beat Roman Reigns after Roman Reigns has been the champion for like uh, about two years now or something, which he's really coming to his own now as they've made him the a heel. So he's much better at that than being a face. And so he's really caught on something there, and he's, uh, he's giving a much better performance. Uh, but everybody figured, you know, this was a big buildup. Cody was doing this for, in the honor of his father, Dusty Rhodes, who never won this title. And, yeah, they uh, they decided to have the bloodline cheat, of course, as they would, and then Cody lose the match, which disappointed a lot of people. And some people said, oh, no, you got to, you know, there's going to be a longer end game. They're going to have more. But, you know, that's, the WrestleMania is supposed to be like your season finale. I mean, this is where you wrap your storylines. This is where the good guys finally win. And then we go and work our way towards backlash, and we start a new season of stories. That's the way you. That's the way it's normally you would do it. You know, WrestleMania is like the culmination, and you wrap everything up. You wrap a year's worth of story up. Well, they you don't do it when you uh, it, when you do it like this. When you build up this, the, you know, Cody so much to have him lose, and then uh, and I haven't watched Raw yet, but I've seen videos on YouTube. Well, I haven't watched all the videos because I didn't want to spoil everything for myself. But maybe I won't watch Raw after all. Uh, but I saw videos of what all had occurred, and they had Brock Lesnar come out like he was going to tag team with Cody uh, to have a tag match between uh, Solo Sequoia and um, and Roman Reigns. And then later on, um, Brock Lesnar turned on Cody. And, uh, the, you know, there was a lot of other things, disappointing matches. Uh, you know, overall, the feedback from what I was seeing has not been good. And apparently what the story is is that Vince McMahon, after announcing the sale even of uh, WWE to a company called Endeavor, who currently owns the UFC, uh, he took some creative control and started changing things immediately on that Monday night. And so the question is, will he be there uh, as they go I th Portland, Seattle, somewhere? I don't know. It's in Northwest. Somewhere in the Northwest. <laughs> They're going to, this is where SmackDown takes place. And the question is, will Vince be there controlling again? Has Triple H been moved out of his position of creative control? Because things were improving under, under Triple H and the stories were getting better. And I actually came back and started watching over the last couple of months. But if uh, Triple H is not going to do his stories and Vince is going to go and put things back to how they were, when uh, basically people said that everything was just kind of getting the worst of things and I probably will not be paying any attention anymore, but I will be playing the games, which is what we get into. What have you been playing? And so, yeah, as I just mentioned, I have been playing WWE 2K23. Uh, having, of course, I have a lot more fun sometimes creating characters and seeing what other people have created. Uh, you know, filling out a roster of well, a lot of X Men, classic X Men style characters and Marvel characters. Uh, I, I need to get some more Masters of the Universe. Right now, I've got a He Man that Lost Boy Philip has made. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, there is another guy that, um, and I'm trying to think of who he is on Twitter, but he did a fairly, fairly decent job. He made a lot of Master of Universe characters last year, and I've, you know, I found him again, and he's making a lot more. His are good, but I, not quite to the level of what I'm hoping they would be. I mean, but he does do some really, really good Master of Universe, but not all of them are quite what I, you know, what I, what I envisioned for them to be. So there's a lot of them I try to make myself, or maybe somebody else will make one. Although I think last year he made a really neat trap jaw and a Stratos that I I, uh, I downloaded those from him. So I've keep an eye on him because I do appreciate that he's doing it. I just don't always download everything he's got, and I haven't haven't grabbed all of his yet because I don't know. I think he did better last year than what he's done so far this year, but I think he's just getting warmed up, uh, just creating like crazy. So, uh, but I of course have created Cloud or not Cloud, but Aerith and Tifa from Final Fantasy VII. I need to make Cloud. Uh, I also made Iceman and Firestar to go with the Spider-Man I downloaded. I downloaded the same Spider-Man that I downloaded from the guy last year. He does a really good Spider-Man. The only the only thing I wish he would do different is he uses a, a, a clothing outfit thing that has lines go across the legs because it's got, like, shorts. Uh, instead of finding, like, some sort of full-body thing, 
Uh, and I, I don't know if it's uh, somehow it makes it easier for the rest of the design of what he's trying to do, but it just puts these lines across the legs, and I hate that. But otherwise, he does a really good job of making Spider-Man. So uh, I've downloaded Spider-Man. I've made an Iceman of Firestar to go with them because, of course, we have to have the spider friends. I have, of course, created myself. If you are looking to play as me or if you'd like to beat me up, search for Spider-Pan Jeremy. Uh, that way my last name is not necessarily in there. <laughs> Stalkers. Uh, so, but yeah, you can find me if you search for Spider Pan. And uh, heck, if you follow uh, what my creations, I've I've developed a ring and a show and all this stuff based on the Neverland fandom nexus. Uh, so you know, there's some fun in there, and I've got some fun characters. Hopefully, you'd like to play with that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm planning on making more. Philip makes a lot of great characters, uh, and I'm even playing with some of his. And I'm going to be making some videos of what goes on in the Phantom Nexus Wrestling Division, and uh, I put them up on YouTube. I've already got uh, I think. Th- Two videos up up there. For the, yeah, I think two wrestling videos. One where our friend Seth uh, battles Thanos, and then I've got a longer video which is uh, featuring some matches with Philip being uh, fought fighting with uh, Orca, who is a character of Philip's creation from a long time ago, back way way back. Uh, this is like this extremely dominant character. Of course, it's hard for him to be dominant when. You make superheroes, too. So you got Superman in there, which is hard for Orca, even though he's like a maxed out character. Because I don't like to have every character maxed out. I like balance. So when I create a character, I try to be believable. And when I download a character, I try to tweak it if I, don't, if I think they've overpowered it. Because some people, when they create a character, they just max all the stats out. And it's like, no, not this. Try to make it more like the character would be. If a 100, it should be the level of Superman's strength. Where does your character fit amongst that? Although, you know, Roman Reigns is currently sitting at a 100 inside of my universe. And because you know, he's supposed to be extremely dominant, so high score. So, but otherwise, yes, having fun with that. But also, uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake came out, I guess it's been a couple of weeks now. And I saw other people had had completed the game long before I even got a chance to finish it, because I'm just, I don't have a lot of time to play. Uh, you know, so, and that's why I'm also not getting all the podcasting, because I want, I come home and I want to relax and I want to play a little bit. And so I get to play a little bit. And I was doing like a chapter at a time going through Resident Evil 4. Uh, but definitely enjoyed it. And I was, you know, I didn't give a darn. I put it on the easy settings. Like, you know, I just want to go through. I put it on assisted mode. I just want to go through and play it, just play it and just have fun and collect all the stuff. And then uh, once I've collected stuff, and I'll come back in New Game Plus and we'll do it at a normal difficulty level, which I kind of started doing. But I went over to play the wrestling game, you know, just, just so, you know, I will play it through as a regular thing. And I just wanted to have all my guns, you know, all, all enhanced to give me a little bit more of a fighting chance. Because when I played that chainsaw demo, it was really hard. But I have been playing, having some fun with that, and I don't know if I remember totally all that I did. Uh, finish the story mainly on on the Hogwarts Legacy game, but I did go back. I'm wanting to complete the map, you know, and then go and get a, get the ending after you've completed the map. So I'm I'm not finishing my entire year at Hogwarts. Yes, and my phone is going off, and I need to maybe silence it. I'm still getting emails here. I am no longer at work. You are not allowed to email me. So. All right, but yeah, that's what I've been playing. I would definitely recommend both, if not well, all three of those games that I have just mentioned. Having a great time with them. Spanning the Disney and Geek Universe to bring you the best in comics, toys, movies, and entertainment. This is news from around Neverland. We got a quick look at a new Final Fantasy 16 trailer that uh, basically shows you the world of, uh, I think it's Valisthea. Or Valisthea? I lo- I'm, th- I'm going to say Valisthea. I don't know, but that's the world. And we got a nice look at it here in a video that just looks incredible i mean really square enix is really their world creation for final fantasy games is pretty amazing anyway but what the level of what they can do on a ps5 it just looks phenomenal (laughs) can we just say that it just looks phenomenal i am so pleased with what i was seeing here and uh, you're going to be playing as a character named clive rossfeld or rossfield probably rossfield i don't know uh you're on a mission to free mankind from its fate with the use of Iconic, which is E-I-K-O-N-I-C, powers at his disposal to overcome the obstacles of enemies that lie before him. 
this game, Final Fantasy 16, will launch June 22nd on PlayStation 5. I do plan on saving some money aside to get that as well. Heck, we've even got uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor coming very quickly. But I've done spent all my money at Planet Comic Con. <laughs> I really did. So I may have to wait on a few things. Uh, plus, I, I would like to set some money aside. You know, uh, free comic book day is coming up here in early May, right in time for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, uh, which is some movie I'm still exciting about. Exciting or excited? I would about, and I'm I'm finding myself not getting as excited about certain movies as I would be. I mean, I I'm not getting excited about a movie just because they made it. I want to know, hey, wow, I'm really gonna like these characters, or I'm really gonna like the story, or they haven't got a, so much an agenda shoved in it that I feel like I'm getting preached to about an agenda. Uh, hello, Disney. So. <laughs> You know, I, I don't find myself getting excited just because I made it. And, you know, you know I've, I've had people say, oh, you should be, you know, oh, you're going to go see Dungeons and Dragons? Well, maybe, maybe I'll wait for it to stream because I, I, you know, I am seeing some positive reviews on it. So maybe I'll check it out. But I was like, I'm not going to go see a Dungeons and Dragons just because they made a Dungeons and Dragons movie. Uh, I want to know that I'm going to really enjoy it and not be disappointed in it before I go. Although there are some movies that they show just enough, like Super Mario Brothers, which as a day of recording, it is released, and I've been hearing lots of positive things about that, and I was looking forward to it. From what I was seeing in the trailer, it did get me excited about that movie. Uh, so I would like to go see it. My wife does not want to go today, though. She's got to make a test for it tomorrow, so maybe over the weekend I'll find a time, although it's Easter weekend, so I don't know that I'm going to have time to go and see it. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to get a chance to record a podcast either, because it's a holiday weekend. So... But, uh, yeah, so I don't get too excited about that many movies anymore, but I am still excited if Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 does look really, really, really good. So I'm pretty excited for that one. All righty, and uh, I don't remember if I put in the, the trailer. I, I see a link here on the YouTube where I was uh, just going to get some information there on the Final Fantasy seven or sixteen thing, and I want to remember to come back to that trailer because I don't remember if I put the link up. Um, Got to make sure I click the right thing. Here we go. But I do have a YouTube link here. Um, this, uh, you may already know about this. Let's just listen to this audio. Aloha, everyone from beautiful Hawaii. We are here on the island of Oahu, where I did a lot of my growing up. As you know, Hawaii means so much to my family and me, and the traditions of our ohana, or ainga, as we say in Samoa, were shaped by these incredible islands. The Pacific Islands and their cultures inspired a very special story, one that you all know very well. And that story is, drum roll please, Moana! Moana! <laughs> That's right. We are so excited and happy to announce that a live action reimagining of Moana is in the works. Moana, Grandma Tala, the music, the dance, Tafiti, Pua the pig, the village, the beautiful, powerful ocean, and one more, what's that guys, oh, Yours truly, Hey Hey the Chicken. Kidding, Hey Hey's gonna be in it, but of course Maui will be in it too. As many of you may not know, the brilliant team at Disney Animation, my partners, we found so much inspiration from Maui in the mana and the presence of my late grandfather, the legendary High Chief Peter Maivia. He would walk in, light up the room, the energy, the tattoos, the hair, the bod. When you're staring at a demigod, demigod, thank you. Sorry, I get caught up in the moment. So as you guys can see, perfect timing as the sun comes out, just how deep this story is for me. Because in a way, when I bring Maui to life, I'm doing it in the spirit of my grandfather. So. Uh, it's still very early in the process. There's so much more work to be done, but until then, there is one more thing that I need to kick this journey off right. Hey, girls, you want to get uh, that special thing that Daddy needs? Wow, you guys are Daddy's daughters. You are so strong. Thank you guys so much. We're going to go in the ocean. Yes. Oh, look at the love I have. Is Daddy Maui? No! You guys want ice cream? Yes! See, so Daddy's Maui. Yes! <laughs> okay, who asked for this? It it's it's been what maybe seven years. Did we need a live action Moana? Did we really? I'd like you know a, a sequel would be nice. I I'd I'd be down with that. But we're we needed a live action version of this, and a lot of you know this is getting a lot of people are kind of just rolling their eyes. 
finally people are starting to come around and really, you know, and say, what is Disney doing? Are they just out of ideas? Are they, is it just that bad now? I mean, they had a lot of massive layoffs going on this week. I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to. I don't really cover a lot of Disney news anymore. And I'm glad for it because, I mean, goodness sakes. I mean, Maui was a pretty good movie. Did we need a live action version? No, I like the animated version. It's good. It's not that old. Uh, they said they're still in the early stages. Well, you're early enough to where you haven't spent a whole lot of money. You can stop. You can stop. We don't need any more of these live action versions. You're dealing with a company that made its reputation on making fantastic and beautiful and wonderful animated movies. And now you're not. But we'll move on because I don't want to get stuck on that. Something else, though, that uh, oh, a little bit of a mixed reaction on this one, uh, where Harry Potter TV series, according to Deadline, for HBO Max, in inching closer to reality with J.K. Rowling in talks to produce. Now, of course, when she goes to produce it, there are certain people in the world that are going to be all upset that she's working on her own creation. Whatever. They don't have to go and enjoy this. That's fine. Uh, but I I have said, I probably even previously on the show, how much I think a, a Harry Potter animated series would be very cool. And maybe you could dive deeper into the books and a little bit more information. And I, I don't know that this would be an animated series, but they're looking at an HBO Max television series to focus one book per season of all seven of the Harry, uh, Harry Potter novels. Uh, so, I mean, this I, I like the idea. Uh, I have heard it say said that, well, if you wanted more of the books, go read the books. And that's true. You should probably go read the books. They're, they are good books. Uh, they're better than the movies. But I, you know, if they make this, I'm, I'm going to watch it, you know. Really, I, I would watch a series of Harry Potter that's, you know, going back to the books. So uh, I would, you know, uh, after I get a look at this, I'll tell Drew if I'm excited. But I'd still, I'd kind of like to see it as an animated, if it was done well, you know, some good animation. From, I mean, Warner Brothers, they, they, they're, they're capable of doing some good animation. So uh, that's what I'd like to see, but I don't know that that's what's going on with this. So, but we'll see, because you know, I, I, I kind of like the sort of the art style that we got on like the American books covers, and uh, like I think even when the first movie was coming out, there was I've even got some little statuettes of Ron and Harry and Hagrid. That's more of the of that artwork style. If the animated series looked like that, I would be happy. So that's I, I kind of have some hopes that this could be, but people are saying it wasn't that long ago, was it? Do we really need to retell the story? No, we probably not. But I, you know, honestly, with this one, I I think I would go because there's so much that didn't get told in the movies. That if you could do it as a as a series and put all the details in it and do it right, you know, I I think I could go for that. <laughs> to be honest, also from Deadline, Monk returns as Peacock orders reunion movie starring Tony Shalhoub in the original series cast. So this is a follow up movie coming to Peacock. NBA, NBC Universal streamer has ordered Mr. Monk's Last Case, a Monk movie. Uh, I, I actually first saw this on their on the Monk official YouTube channel. They posted it as a uh, not as a video, but as a just direct text post that said that they were going to do this. Uh, this is going to have the original creatives team for the series, including the creator, executive producer, and writer Andy Breckman, executive producer David Hoerman, and executive producer director Randy Zisk. Studio behind it is UCP, a division of Universal Studio Group. So, if you'd never watched Monk, uh, there are I'm pretty sure that you can watch it on Peacock. It was a lot of fun. It was funny. It was heartwarming, and it was just good uh, detective stories for what we would call the defective detective. Uh, see, good good detectives always have some sort of weird personality quirk or a flaw or something like that, right? And of course, Monk was that he was. A germaphobe, and you know, he, he, I wouldn't call him cowardly because he would fight for right, and he would find his courage when he was terrified of stuff. But he always had to face his fears, and he was terrified of everything. But he had had to face them, so I wouldn't call him a coward. But he was afraid of things, and um, had to have everything organized such such a way. You know, he had a lot of mental phobias and stuff like that. Uh, but that just made him very, very interesting as a character and uh, made it a very funny series. And Tony Shalhoub is just charming. Is you know He's just a fantastic actor. Uh, and so bringing this character back, I'm, I'm excited. I can't remember if I um, 
caught the season finale. I don't know if I've seen every episode of Monk, so this would be a good time for me to add that to the list of shows I want to watch. Because <laughs> I don't remember the, the, the series finale of Monk. I probably watched it, but I, I just, for some reason, I don't remember it. Hmm. Okay, but of all the things to be excited about... Uh, Here's from Fox News. Disney's live-action remake of The Little Mermaid rewrites songs like Kiss the Girl to teach consent. Now, that's not the only song that's gotten uh, rewritten. It's about to play video. I need to make sure. There we go. Uh, we've also got a rewrite of Poor Unfortunate Souls. Because Kiss the Girl needed to be rewritten because it needed to be clear to viewers that Prince Eric would never force himself on Ariel. Did anybody think he was forcing himself on her in the animated classic? And on Poor Unfortunate Souls, uh, the, the concern was that it might make young girls feel somewhat that they shouldn't speak out of turn. The, uh, the line in there is, The men up there don't like a lot of blabber. They think a girl who gossips is a bore. Yet on land, it's much preferred to ladies not to say a word. After all, dear, what is idle babble for? Now, was anybody offended by that line? But see, when, when you put this line in, even in the context of Ursula as trying to convince Ariel to give up her voice... Of course she's going to say stuff like this. I mean, it just makes sense for story. So I don't know what this probably wasn't Alan Menken's idea. I mean, there's I'm sure there's some additional songs been written for this live action Little Mermaid. So, I mean, he's just cutting a paycheck. And I can't fault him for that. But at some point, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd think he'd be like, uh, no, let's not rewrite my songs. Because I don't think it was his idea. I don't think it was. I would hope not. But here's the lyrics of Kiss the Girl that apparently now controversial. Quote fingers, uh, you can't see. Yes, you want her. Look at her. You know you do. Possibly she wants you too. There is one way to ask her. It don't take a word, not a single word. Go on, kiss the girl. Okay, so that would be him forcing himself on her. She can't talk. So you, to, you, if you ask her or if you go in for the kiss, she has ways non-verbally to respond to that. I mean, yeah. Really, and once again, we're dealing with somebody who she can't speak, but she has nonverbal ways to communicate. The whole point of the song is that he he should kiss the girl, but but oh, he's not forcing himself. She wants him to. We know this. Okay. I tell you what, this just you have I have I said enough? How much I'm not excited for this movie, and I'm sick and tired of the Disney remake train. I feel like I've been betrayed by this company. For Because, you know, for so long, we were very pro-Disney around here. But over the past few years, they've really just soiled their legacy so much that I just cannot support it anymore. But, all right, we do have some fun stuff in the trailer park, and I, I'm going to, hopefully, I have, there was one movie I definitely, I didn't know I was going to get a trailer for, and I saw it. Oh, and I don't see it on my list, so uh, we're going to pull the trailer park up, and we're going to hit it from a different source because I didn't grab a link for myself. Mama, now the gator got in the house. Now the gator? Give me that sugar. Come here. Oh. Oh. Get him, Mama. Oh. Get that gator. Ah. Ah. The Neverland Trailer Park. So after I'd gathered the trailers of what I was expecting, suddenly, oh look, a blue beetle? Excuse me, Mr. Reyes? You finished scraping the gum off that lounger or what? Oh. Everything right now feels so out of reach. You always land on your feet, bro. You're high man. They don't get out much. <laughs> I just want to rap. Jenny. God, I bet you life. But do not open it. You went in to get a shops, and all you brought back was a hamburger? Okay, I don't think it's a burger. You haven't looked? What the hell is that? How did you get it to do that? I think he likes me. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. What the? You host acquired. Who said that? It's okay, it's gonna be okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, Free entry systems ready. Wait, 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 no, no. 
This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Oh. What is going on? I just want to run. It's called the Scarab. It's some kind of world destroying weapon. It's designed to protect its host. This ain't what you want. Sometimes it does what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. Body out of here. I, I think I cut a bus in half. The scarab chose you, but it belongs to me. The love you feel for your family makes you weak. I just wanna rock. You won't kill my dog, stand on my money, don't know my side. The universe has sent you a gift, and you have to figure out what you're gonna do with it. That's my heart. One, two, three, four, four, five, five. Whatever you can imagine. I can create. Let's party. Oh, yeah! Nice choice. I just want to rap. Whoa. It's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. I just want to rap. <laughs> that line just makes me laugh. <laughs> Batman's a fascist. That's just, I don't know, it's just funny to me. <laughs> but the Blue Beetle, which I, I heard there was a movie of the Blue Beetle in the works, and here it comes. Let me read what DC has on their YouTube channel. From Warner Brothers Pictures comes to feature film Blue Beetle, marking the DC superhero's first time on the big screen. The film, directed by Angel Manuel Soto, stars Zolo Meriduena in the title role as well as his alter ego, Jaime Reyes. Now, of course, you might not have recognized his voice. If you see this trailer, you will recognize him if you've been watching Cobra Kai. He's been in Cobra Kai. He's playing... Oh, my gosh, the character. I forgot his character's name. <laughs> Is he Miguel, I believe? Yes, any Miguel? Yeah, in Cobra Kai. Uh, so, yeah, it's cool to see him getting to do some movies. Uh, he's a recent college grad, Jaime Reyes, returns home full of aspirations for his future, only to find that home is not quite as he left it. As he searches to find his purpose in the world, fate intervenes when Jaime unexpectedly finds himself in possession of an ancient relic of alien biotechnology, the Scarab. When the Scarab suddenly chooses Jaime to be its symbiotic host, he is bestowed with an incredible suit of armor cap capable of extraordinary and unpredictable powers, forever changing his destiny as he becomes the superhero Blue Beetle. I'm so excited about this. Uh, I I love the character. I, I I don't you know I don't read a lot of DC comics, but I've seen this Blue Beetle and this this iteration of Blue Beetle. I think these you know, maybe the third Blue Beetle, uh, but I've seen him. Uh, I think in the Justice League animated series, uh, Batman Brave and the Bowl. I've seen this character pop up. Uh, he's he's a very cool and interesting character. It looks like they've done a really great job of bringing him to life. Uh, I am actually really excited. You know, I was just saying how I don't really get excited for stuff anymore. This I'm excited for because I really do like the character, the Blue Beetle. Uh, so getting a, a nice film from them, that's that just looks great. Something else that uh, I I'm I don't know if I'm excited for, but I definitely want to check it out. From Marvel Studios coming to Disney Plus, we've got a little bit more from Secret Invasion. Fury. Since you've been gone, things have gotten much worse. How do you think I came back? You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us, old friend. This is personal. Very few of us know about the wars fought in the shadows that have raged on this planet. Do you feel responsible? Where are the Avengers? This war is one I have to fight. Alone. Wanted man on the planet. You don't know what they have planned for you. The Great Neck Fury. One 
last fight. June 21st on Disney Plus. Uh, now, the original uh, secret uh, invasion was when it turns out some scrolls had replaced many of Marvel's superheroes, including uh, like a scroll queen, was Spider Woman. And that when they found that out, that was what launched the entire thing. Uh, I I didn't really read a whole lot of the Secret Invasion uh, and the comics and everything, but I don't know what sort of spin they're going for here. This looks more kind of a spy thriller, but there's definitely some alien stuff going on. And uh, we even see some of the scrolls that we've met in the uh, Captain Marvel movies uh, surrounded by a bunch of people who look exactly the same. Uh, so uh, is this maybe the villainous scrolls we've been waiting for coming along? I don't know. It's they're they're keeping it very quiet. But uh, so it looks like very much a Nick Fury spy thriller uh, with some, of course, Marvel and Alien uh, levels. But I, I'm I'm interested to check it out. I don't know that I'm super excited, but I'm interested to check this out. It does look very interesting. So yeah, I'll, I'll be looking forward to checking that out and add it to the list of things that I need to see. Uh, oh, hey, I didn't mention Super Mario Brothers actually opened today, but you know what? I actually had on the list the, the final trailer uh, from Universal Pictures. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and listen to it, just because. Why not? Here we go! <laughs> oh, I got this. No problem. Ah! That is a cruel twist of fate. You were going to help me find my brother, Luigi. There's a human. Do you know him? Do you think I know every human being with a mustache wearing an identical outfit with the letter of his first name on it? Because I don't. Bowser is coming. Together, we are going to stop that monster. Uh, who's he? <laughs> There's a huge universe out there with a lot of galaxies. They're all counting on us. No pressure. This has been training them, Starshield human. I'm not threatened. Mario! <laughs> you asked for it! <laughs> Me now. Ah! You got the cat box! <laughs> oh my! I'm sorry. Okay. Now you die. Uh, so this has already opened. I'm hearing some positive things about it, that uh, it, ha it has been very enjoyable, and it does balance things out between Mario and Luigi, uh, and you don't get them really together, which is what you're kind of hoping for uh, until, like, later on, I guess. But the, the one question that I've had about the movie is a lot of the footage we've seen, it seems uh, Peach is quite capable on her own. So I was like, okay, if she's capable of all this stuff, and she's actually teaching Mario how to get and how to navigate and do this stuff... What does she need Mario for? So I'm hoping they've done something that explains that. The only thing they've talked about is explaining why Mario's not going to have an Italian accent. And I didn't need an explanation of that. He's from Brooklyn. Give him a New York accent. And from Brooklyn, you know, an accent. that I said accident? Uh, an accent that, it, like, he sounds friendly. He's from Brooklyn, you know? Something like that. Would have been fine. I could have gone with that, you know. He, but he doesn't need the Italian accent. I mean, he's, he's not from Italy. He's from Brooklyn. It just happens to be Italian, you know. Do Italians from Brooklyn all talk like they like they just came off uh, Italy? I don't think so. I wouldn't imagine so. Granted, if you go to New York, man, I, I when I when I was there a long time ago when I was just a teenager, I heard about every language which in the world in that in that in Manhattan area. So I mean, it is it is definitely a, a um, diversified area. So I guess it's possible. But I'm you know, thinking if he talks like somebody from Brooklyn, I'm fine with that. You know, I don't need an explanation why he doesn't have the Italian accent. You know, I don't need the it's a me Mario. I don't need that. Uh, so I know a lot of people do, but I, you know, I just want an explanation of why Peach needs Mario. The way they set it up looks like she's capable. And the other question I have, and uh, I've, I've gotten the explanation, well, in Japan, she was always Peach. But you remember here in the States, we had Princess Toadstool, and she was a redhead. 
in the games and the cartoon and all that. I would love for them to do something to kind of explain that and have some fun with that idea that there was a princess toadstool that might be separate from Peach or something like that. Because we also we have a princess Daisy that's in uh, Super Mario Land instead of the Mushroom Kingdom. And Daisy was used in the, the previous live action movie. It would be nice to even have a little shout out to Pauline, maybe, uh, in the in the in the Brooklyn area. Maybe Pauline would be at least a friend of Mario and Luigi's. You know, Pauline from Donkey Kong, and maybe you could even say why Donkey how Donkey Kong maybe was from the real world and ended up in the Mushroom Kingdom. Maybe we could explain that in the movie. I don't know. I have a lot of questions and things I'd like to see uh, when I get a chance to finally see this movie, whenever that's going to be. But I've been hearing a lot of positive things. I'm even hearing some positive things about the Dungeons and Dragons movie. So I don't know. I, I, I might uh, I might end up enjoying that one as well. I'll, I'll, I'll see it. Philip really wants to go to a lot of different movies, but I'm broke. After going to Planet Comic Con, I am broke. So uh, the last thing, and this is kind of, well, it's not not exactly the last thing. Well, you know what? I'm going to rearrange things. So the last thing I will share will be what I was waiting for while I delayed the show. But I got another surprise that there was a, a, a trailer for the Barbie movie, but I can't play the audio because it's primarily Beach Boys music. <laughs> so there'd be a copyright strike all over the place. Um, the one thing I will say about it, this, you know, I wasn't really excited about it anyway, other than I thought, well, it could be fun. There's for something based on toys. There's a, seems to be a, a lot of adult humor that I don't know if it's going to go over kids heads and I don't know if it's appropriate for it to be there. There's a bit in the trailer where Barbie and Ken are discussing that uh, they want to stay over because we're boyfriend and girlfriend. So, well, what do you want to stay over for? Well, I don't know. Okay. We know. All right, we know, Ken. We know. But then they also have phraseolo- phra- phraseology, uh, phrasing at the end where I will beach you off. No, I'm going to beach you off. Uh, you know, there was the, um, I don't know what the, where the story was going with that, where, where Ken was going to have turned out to have been gay or something, and having him and another guy talking about they're going to beach the, each other off. Okay, I don't think I need to explain this to you. But you know what that sounds like they're saying. Um, I didn't find that to be appropriate for what, you know, kids might want to see this movie. It's Barbie. It's a toy. Now, granted, I don't know that kids are really playing with toys. They're playing with their phones all the time. And most toys are now going to collectors. Even Barbie has collectors that go after Barbie dolls. Uh, and they have, like, specific um, dolls of different, you know, I even remember when I worked at a toy store, we had an Audrey Hepburn. Barbie, you know, so they're making Barbies off of different celebrities and different things, and they're more like collector's items, I think maybe for adult collectors, but they're still toys, and I'm sure there's lots of little girls all over the world who have Barbie toys, and I don't think it's appropriate to put adult humor in there. Overall, though, they did show us a little bit of what the plot's going to be. She's going to go to the real the real world. Oh, it's shocking. I would have never have guessed they'd done that. It's, not only, it's never been done before. <clears throat> Master of the Universe and uh, Elf and a lot of other movies where you have somebody from a magical place that suddenly ends up in the real world. Enchanted. I don't know. Have we never seen this before? So, But that's the, the story of this one. And then Will Ferrell is going to play the corporate executive person who's going to try to exploit Barbie or whatever. Uh, I think even Santa Claus the movie kind of did this. I mean, I feel like this is a plot we've seen before. It is kind of funny. Some of the stuff they, they show in the trailer, you see Barbie walking around in high heels. She steps out of the high heels, and she's still on her tiptoes like her feet are still in that position. That's kind of funny. And it's also kind of funny at one point, Barbie is saying hi to everybody else who is also named Barbie. And, of course, every male who is also named Ken. So that's kind of funny, but kind of like, oh, huh, I get it. That's, yeah, that's funny because all the dolls are named Barbie, too, except for there's a lot of dolls that are not named Barbie as well. But, yeah. Not excited, but something that I am kind of, uh, uh, although I'm feeling a little predictability, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, we've got the official trailer number two. My name is Miles Morales. I'm Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man, and things are going great. Oh, yeah, you were supposed to be here. Bye. All right, whatever. Whatever? Wow. Whatever? So are you like a cow or a Dalmatian? I am the spot. (laughs) That's not funny. Don't, don't do that. Miles' grades are pretty good. A in AP Physics. That's my little man. And a B in Spanish. What? Okay. Miles. Are you trying to Mira, that's what I'm going to see. I got to go. All right, okay, bye. He's lying to you. And I think you know it. Danger. Miles! Wanna get out of here? Oh! Win? Two 
Spider-Man. There's an elite crew with all the best spider people in it. Right. Who's the new guy? This is unbelievable. This is the lobby. Miguel O'Hara. The whole thing was his idea. What's a guy got to do to join this spider team? You can never be part of this. Don't even get me started on Doctor Strange and the little nerd back on Earth 1999-99. Come on, go easy on the kid. He had a terrible teacher. Peter. Miles. Mayday. You have a baby? I have a baby. <laughs> I'll take it from here. Miles, being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. I was a danger. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. <sighs> Send me home. I can't do that. I can do both! Spider-Man always... Not always. What about Uncle Ben? If not for Uncle Ben, most of us wouldn't be here. Can't stop me now! You can't run forever, kid! I can't lose one more friend. Miguel, this isn't what we talked about! You knew? I had no idea what you're doing! Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. All stations, stop Spider-Man. You, you know what I mean? And then I looked at my uncle and... Uh, let me guess. He died? Alright, June 2nd. Across the Spider-Verse, the new Spider-Man animated movie uh, featuring Miles Morales. Now, uh, you might recall, those of you who have been this with us for a long time, I wasn't that enthused with the first one. When I when I first was seeing stuff, I didn't like the choppy animation, but then I saw it and I loved it. It was a lot of fun. I had a, I haven't watched it in a long time. We have to go watch that again before this new one comes out. But uh, I was surprised at just how good that first animated movie really was. Uh, really enjoyed it. I know Philip really had a great time when uh, we, because I, I bought it, and of course when we watched it over at his house uh, at the time, and he was just so super excited about it. It's like this was just great. It was so much fun. Uh, so I, I expect I'm probably I might end up loving this j almost just as much. And I, I, I do appreciate the little nod they uh, were Miguel, the Spider-Man 2099, as we might know him from the 90s. Um, those of us familiar with him. He does mention that let's not even talk about the incident about the Spider-Man and the Doctor, the Doctor Strange incident he talks about, which to me is where they're trying to tie this all together with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and every other Spider-Man uh, stuff, you know. And I even, even at one point, I even recognized the video game, uh, the PlayStation version of Spider-Man, uh, well now on uh, now on PC as well, uh, making an appearance as well. So I mean, this is tying together everything. It's a Spider-Man. It's an entire Spider-Verse. But what I'm seeing in storyline feels like something that's we're going to see more than once this summer. The Flash is going to pretty much bring us the Flashpoint Paradox storyline, where the Flash goes back, tries to alter time, creating a multiverse by trying to save his mother. This time, Miles looks like he wants to try to save his father, and thus per perhaps dooming the rest of the multiverse. And he's thinking about one life instead of all of the others. But that, I mean, that is... That is a big Spider-Man style choice, the sacrifices he has to make. And even uh, it was a really great way. Um, granted, OK, all right, the Spider-Man, the newer Spider-Man game is quite a few years old now. So I'm assuming if you wanted to play it, you've played it by now and you've gotten to the ending. Otherwise, spoiler warning, play yours for a few minutes, seconds, minutes, whatever it's going to take. But at the end of the game, there's a it's a brilliant ending of the game where Peter Parker has to choose to save Aunt May's life or save all of New York, every life in New York. And so I see that they, they're going with that theme. Uh, it's a pretty good idea for a Spider-Man theme of he's going to have to make that choice. But what we're seeing is, you know, because uh, I was even talking to a guy on Facebook, and he says, like, I, why would they make Miguel such a jerk in this? And I said, well, I don't think they're making Miguel a jerk. I think Miguel is just looking at the bigger picture, and Miles is going to have to learn that as well. Um, and I, I have a feeling that Miles is going to have to learn a lesson that the, uh, it's going to— that. It's going to require sacrifice, but he, he might be breaking the multiverse Spider-Verse by trying to save his father, which should not happen. Uh, so I think that's going to be part of the conflict. So it's not so much that the Spider-Man of 2099, Miguel, uh, I can't think of his last name, is so much the villain as he is just an antagonist to Miles, who is our protagonist, but doesn't mean that uh, Miguel is wrong in what he's doing. Uh, so he, and I figure Miles will, will find out Miguel is right by the end. 
uh, that he's going to have to make sacrifices, and that's how you save the world sometimes is by sacrifice. So I feel like I'm going to have already seen this story before, but I'm I'm interested to check it out because I was I didn't expect much out of the first one, and like I said, I ended up loving it. Uh, so I expect that I'm probably going to enjoy this more than I would have thought. Okay, but uh, I, I don't really have time to play the audio. We've, we're almost running into the hour. I'm about 10 minutes away from the hour, but I covered everything I wanted to. I don't have any main topic stuff to talk about. Other than I you want to talk about what I want to do and what I see happening for the, the future of this show, I do want to get back into those retro roots. Uh, I think I've talked about that many times. We cover a lot of like new things coming out, movies and stuff like that coming around. But I want to start tapping and getting right back into some of the classic things we enjoyed when we were kids, movies, television shows. And Philip and I can have a grand time talking about it. Although that can be difficult, Philip. Uh, you know, he's got his health problems. Uh, in fact, after five months of no seizures, he had three really bad ones. Uh, and so, those of you that pray, be praying for him. But I, and I've tried to be positive. It's like, well, we almost the device is almost perfected. That's that he had impl- these implants that he's had to put in. Maybe just a little bit of tweak, and it might stop his seizures altogether. Then he'll be able to go back to life as normal. He'll be able to drive. Only problem is he's got a really bad arthritis in his knees, and he can barely move his knees. He needs he needs some knee surgery, uh, so he needs to lose some weight in order to do that, though, too. So he's he's kind of in bad shape. He can he can't hardly get up and move because of you know there was the chances of seizures and stuff because he strays himself and it it weakens him. Uh, but I feel like we're close to getting that under control. But he had three really bad seizures one day. Um, and he, he was so excited because he was thought he was getting close to where they were going to, you know, officially on his license, he was going to be allowed to drive um, because the, the threat of the seizures were supposed to be mostly gone. But apparently they're not. But not yet. I feel like we're really close. So a little tweak to his implants and it'll be good. But uh, I, I, I plan in the future. I do want to, you know, get more into that retro style and talk about more of that old stuff. That was part of the idea of the show to begin with. And I want to bring that back. Uh, remembering the things we enjoyed when we were young. I uh, had so much that I came across in Planet Comic Con of enjoying things when we were young. And uh, I, even while I was there, I have bought an original He-Man and Skeletor. And I've even tested a, the He-Man figure. has got the squishy head instead of the hard head. And I, I just I enjoyed just kind of squishing his head today. <laughs> you know, just like, it's the squishy head He-Man. Yeah, but it's kind of nice to have those old classic figures here. And uh, So, yeah, I want to get back into stuff that we loved when we were young, uh, which we can share with uh, our younger generations coming after us. So we're going to get back onto that focus, I think, uh, on the show. That's 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 my goal. And I still want to have a lot of different guests uh, in, in, the, in the coming futures. I want this show to keep going. And I want to be able to have more time to do more stuff. I want to be excited about this show. I want you to be excited about this show. I want you to share this show. And I have new shirts, and I got more on the way that are based on the message from Phil Dollar, you know, love equals service. And I even uh, if anyone's familiar with Awaken with JP and JP Sears, great comedian, uh, very very wise in his own ways. Uh, he has a great video actually talking about love being service. Uh, and he, it's one where he's, he says he's changed his mind about God. Uh, or and basically he's telling his entire story of how he changed his mind because he came from a more of a New Age spiritualism background. And uh, now he's uh, more of a Christian focus. But he's talking about how the, the love demonstrated to us was acts of service and sacrifice. And so if we can just learn that. Uh, but I've got a lot of other things that we can learn about love that have come in a lot of different verses that I'm going to be attaching to these shirts. They'll be available on our store. If you go to NeverlandPodcast.com and click on the store, you will find all of our shirts available. When you buy a shirt, you do help out with the cost that it takes to run this show, and I do appreciate it. Otherwise, of course, you can help the show uh, on pot, on uh, oh Patreon. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. You can get on Patreon and you can become a supporter there for a very low price. And then you get to hear the show without all these ads plugged in there. So make sure you go to NeverlandPodcast.com. We want to remember to thank Karen Kennedy, Ricky Pope of Christian Nerds Unite, and Darren Wilhite of the Wilhite and Wall Show for helping out with our introduction. Make it, remember, you can email us, podcast at NeverlandPodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. There's even a group. I, I need to post more stuff on Facebook. But Facebook's gotten kind of frustrating because I have to change profiles now to post something onto our page. When it used to be just easy, when I'd see something easy, even on Facebook, like, oh, let me just share that real quick, because that's a movie trailer to this. It's now, it's complicated. That's a bunch of extra steps, and I really wish Facebook hadn't done that. But we're there. Uh, so, And when you go to the website, make sure you join the Neverlanders, become an official Lost Boy or Pixie. And hey, you know what? You can leave us reviews right there in the middle of the front page. Uh, and I, oh, I don't have it in my notes anymore. Why don't I have that in my notes? But it is there on the front page. 
my podcast reviews, uh, they're actually a sponsor. You can click through that and uh, check out their service if you happen to have a podcast and find it useful. And we haven't had any new reviews in a little while, and uh, I would like some new reviews. Uh, we get new reviews, and I will share them on this show. I love sharing the reviews, but I, I think I've shared nearly, I, I, I probably, yeah, I think I've shared every review I've ever gotten over the course of the show. I don't know. So we have quite a few reviews and a lot of them, but I need more so I just so I can share them. And if you email, uh, I, I can share that too. If there's if you want to share your opinion on one of these movies or these trailers, email podcast neverlandpodcast.com. I would love to be able to hear from you, and I will share it on the show when we get it. So uh, now I guess it's time just to get lost in an adventure. We'll see you next time. Tonight in Arkansas, there's a mother tucking in her daughter and turning off the light. A business owner is burning the midnight oil. An at-home dinner date is plating up possibility. And it's all happening under one roof. How? The power of a conversation. Like the one John from Integrity Solutions had with First Horizon Bank about his vision for a sustainable mixed-use building. Now it's not just words, it's life. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash John. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC.